in my home studio right now. I'm not at my other studio with the green screen and it's because I've been dealing with health issues. I do apologize for this, but I still wanted to make videos for you guys. If you guys click right over here, this will take you to my vlogging channel. I talk a lot about what's going on with me. Also, my fiance has been dealing with a lot. Right now, I've been diagnosed with sciatica. It's like, it's a pinched nerve in like my, my back or a slipped disc. We don't know what it is. All I know is I'm in pain every single day and my whole leg is so numb, I can't do anything. So I'm in and out of the hospital constantly and that's why I have to film in my home studio. Right now, I'm actually going for an emergency MRI test. I have another EMG test. I probably already had it by the time you watch this video. And it's a test to see if I have MS or anything like that. They're gonna do tests on my nerves to see what's going on because I don't want to be in pain every single day. It's been three months. Also, my fiance, she needed surgery and we found out about it and she had the surgery the next day. It was huge. It was shocking. Um, it was out of nowhere. So we actually have producer Liam helping me out here. I stole him from the studio. So he's here helping me film at home. So I'm trying to take care of Britt, take care of myself, and Liam's just pretty much taking care of everything. So I thought I had to explain to you guys, but enough of all that. Let's get into what you guys came for. I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support. We're nearing 2 million subscribers, which is insane. And for my vlogging channel, if you guys want to head over here, also the link will be down there in the description below. I've been vlogging for 800 straight days, which is insane. And it's because of you guys. You guys are crazy. Okay, enough of all that. Let's get right into it. So starting off this painful list, and I'm in a lot of pain too. Positive came out of this story. And you guys made it to the end of this video, and my personal surgery story is I had a microdiscectomy for my back. I had a slipped disc, and I had this like young surgeon who was a little bit cocky in my opinion. I underwent the knife, had the surgery, and I was told the chances of re-slipping my disc at my age is under like 5% or a percent. It's not possible. But after my surgery, I was supposed to be in almost no pain. It's almost like an on and off switch and, but that's not how it worked for me. As soon as my surgery was over, I was in way more pain than I was before going into the surgery. And the surgeon who did the surgery came by and I don't think he believed how much pain I was actually in. And I was on my way home, I was being sent home, I was in a wheelchair going out and another surgeon saw me and said, hey, I think something is wrong because of the way you're moving. I was sent back to the bed, I was given an MRI, something in Canada you gotta wait like three months for. I was taken into the MRI and they found out I now have not one but two slip discs so I don't think the first surgeon did anything. He might have made it worse. After the second surgery, it was a success. I came out with almost no pain. Well, this is the end. Hello there, top tenors. How are you doing today? I'm here with Danny Burke to give you a little bit of an update from Top 10 HQ. Yeah, you guys might have noticed in some recent videos that Rebecca and I have still been here at the studio filming like normal, but Landon has been filming from his home. Now, those of you who watch his vlogs will know that he has sciatica. So basically, Landon had a herniated disc, which was giving him a lot of back problems and a lot of leg problems. And over the past couple of days, he's been in hospital having emergency surgery. Now, now the good news is that everything's gone very well, he's back home and resting, but obviously he's not able to make it into the studio, so we thought we would let you know that that's where he is. So yeah, for now, Landon is hoping to continue filming from his studio at home, but he does plan on being back here with us in the new year to continue filming, so that's good news. In the meantime, if you want to catch up with his progress on his road to recovery, you can check out his vlog channel. We're going to leave a link to that in the description box below if you want to see what he's up to. Yep, I found myself drawn into them at the weekend because obviously he's vlogging from his hospital bed and stuff like that. So it's very scary, but good job he has your support and our support. If you want to. Okay, so I have a lot to tell you guys. It's such a short amount of time, so I'll give you guys a quick, quick update. It's I don't really like bringing my personal life into this, but right now uh, I'm going through a lot. And if you guys want to see everything, and the, you guys can check out the vlog videos. I don't want to get into too much information. But the other day, my dad almost died. He was in critical condition. He blacked out, he fell, he got burned, he woke up, he fell again, and he got burned all over his body. He's, he's a burnt patient at the hospital right now, and I've been going there every single day for him. Um, he's very confused. He can't move the whole right side of his body. They thought he had a stroke, his, his face, and just, it's not a good time for him, but I'm vlogging as much as I can for you guys. And I thought I would tell you on this channel, just in case you see a leave of absence on this channel. But I have recorded videos well in advance 
So I should still be here, but I thought I owed it to you guys to explain it a little bit. So if you guys want to see what's going on, um, head over to the vlog channel here. We'll put a link in the description below. Let's try to chirp this video a little bit and let's get right into it. Because get back to my dad and my mom. Uh, when we were younger, they were in love, but they split, and my dad, I don't really know what happened to him. He kind of disappeared. But me growing up now, I kind of figured out what happened to him. He used to drink a lot, and he would pass out, and I found out he was an alcoholic. So that's probably what happened to him, which made me real sad. So now it's my mom, my sister, myself, and my younger sister. I was six, my sister was five, my older sister was seven. After my dad left, my sister, well, she kind of disappeared as well. I was so young, so I didn't really know what happened to her. She was taken away by these people that just came in our house, and I was so confused. So she was taken into this other house, and she lived with these other people, and I just didn't understand it. They told me she lived in a group home. What the hell is that place? I don't even know what that is, but I was kind of happy because she was with a lot of people. But then after a while, I became sad because she wasn't coming home. So now I gotta redraw my family. It's my mom, myself, and my sister, which is ridiculous. My family is slowly disappearing. But then again, me and my sister, we also was taken away into this home. I thought it was this group home, but it wasn't. They called it a foster home. And I was so confused. I had no idea what it was. It's pretty much a whole bunch of people living in this place who doesn't have a family. And it was me and my sister living with a whole bunch of strangers. And it was so confusing to me. I thought because I was living in a foster home, it made me a bad kid, and it made me feel so crappy and unwanted. And this is where it began, where I moved from house to house, all over the place, uh, with me and my sister. I did have visits with my mom and dad, but they were separated, so I would have one on one weekend, and the other on the next weekend. But when it came to my older sister, who was taken to the group home, I had no visits. There was like a time where it was like three years where I, where I didn't even see my older sister at all. I've just lived in so many different places like Brampton and Oshawa and Whippy and British Columbia. I was way out west. Because I was moving so much, I never fit into any schools. There were so many people and it was always me, but I was always the one that was left out. Because all these people were already friends for like so freaking long and then I'm just like the new kid and just didn't make friends. I never fit in. So the only real person that I had in life was pretty much my younger sister. She was the only family that I had left who I was living with and we were just so close in age. In the foster homes, they never fed us properly. There was like budgets, so I used to steal rice and foods for me and my sister, and like bread and chips and whatever I can get a hand on. I lost all my friends and respect. People had uh, for me again. Then nobody liked me. Name calling judged, I can never get that photo back. It's out there forever. I started cutting, like, uh, like this is what it led to her. She's starting to cut herself, all because you wanted to have fun and send her picture out there. Um, every, didn't have any friends. I sat at lunch alone, so I moved schools again. Everything was better, even though I sat alone at lunchtime in the library every day. After a month later, I started talking to an old guy friend. We back and forth texted, and he started to say he liked me, led me on. He had a girlfriend, then he said, come over, my girlfriend's on vacation. So I did, huge mistake. He hooked up with me, I thought he liked me. One week later, I got a text say, get out of your school. His girlfriend had 15 others, including himself. The girl and, just two, and two others said, look around, nobody likes you. In front of my new school, 50 people. A guy then yelled, just punch her already. So she did. She threw me to the ground and punched me several times. Kids filmed it. Like, kids are just so sick. 50 people is around and not one person can stand up for her and say this is wrong? It, I was all alone and left on the ground. I felt like a joke in this world. I thought nobody deserves this. I was alone. I lied and said it was all my fault and it was my idea. I didn't want him getting hurt. I thought he really liked me, but he just wanted sex. Someone yelled, punch her already. Teachers ran over, but I just went and laid in a ditch, and my dad found me. I wanted to die so bad. When he brought me home, I drank bleach. It killed me inside. I thought I was really going to die. Ambulance came and brought me to the hospital and flushed me. After I got home, I saw, all I saw was on Facebook was, she deserved it. Did, like, seriously, haven't you guys done enough? Did... Did you wash the mud out of your hair? I hope she's dead, nobody cares. I moved to another city with my mom. Another school, another friggin' school. I didn't press charges because I wanted to move on. 
Six months has gone. People are posting pictures of bleach, Clorox, and ditches. Don't they see at this point that they they brought her to the state of mind that she drank bleach, that she wanted to kill herself, but yet they're posting, they're aggregating her again, bullying her again online saying drink bleach, like, and they're giving her Clorox and pictures of ditches? Are you freaking serious? Tagging me, I was doing a lot better, they said. Uh, she should have tried a different bleach. I hope she dies this time and it isn't so stupid. Why do I get this? I messed up, but why follow me? Um, they said, I hope she sees and I hope she sees this and kills herself. I left your city. I'm constantly crying now. Every day I think, why am I still here? My anxiety is horrible now. Never went out this summer. All my past lives, never getting better. Can't go to school, meet or be with people. Honestly, this this story is just so depressing, and it honestly it touched me because I feel sorry for this kid. I feel sorry for the family, and if the family ever watches this this video. I just want to say I'm, I'm sorry that bullying is out there and bullying happens and there's not much that people are doing about it. I don't see that there's much people doing about it. Not too long ago, a guy, I think his name is Jeremy Rodemeyer or something, uh, don't quote me on that, he killed himself because he came out of the closet and he got made fun of. And nothing is being done in schools. This girl's 15 years old, what is that, 7th, maybe 8th grade? That is just so young to be bullied. So, but she does continue, constantly cutting, that's why I created the video. Did you guys know 1 in 4 students in kindergarten through grade 8 are bullied? This is like 25% of the people. That is a very, very high number. And I have to say that I fit in within this 25%. When I was young, I grew up in a foster home all my life. And I was moved around pretty much from year to year. And every freaking school that I went to, there was a new bully for me. And you know what? I freaking hate bullies. And honestly, I'm not sure if it's true. But the reason why I thought I was bullied was because I'm brown. I know it sounds so bizarre that racism still happens, but every place that I've lived in, every foster home, every school that I've been in, I was the only brown kid. So to me, I just felt like I never fit in. And for the bully, I guess I was an easy target. I was just such a little person. And because of this damn bully, I felt so left out. Right now I live in Toronto, Canada, but I used to live in British Columbia. Now I bring that up because this is where Amanda Todd committed suicide because of bullying. So I know what bullying is like in British Columbia, and it's not good at all. When I was living there, I honestly couldn't avoid getting bullied. I have no idea why. 64% of kids in British Columbia have been bullied in school. And there's about 72% of the people in British Columbia who observes bullying. And we need to do something about it. But you know what? It's so hard to do something about it. Because you can't just stand up to the bully. The bully's always the toughest guy. And this bully person is always the most popular, which I do not get. Why does a bully get to have so many friends? And me, I get to have no friends at all. I swear, in most situations, the bully always wins. And I don't get that. My biggest bully in life, I actually remember his name because honestly, he impacted my life so much. His name was Mike. I'm not gonna say his last name for obvious reasons. He bullied me in grade five. And to be honest, I remember every single day that this kid has bullied me. This guy would find me during recess, lunch hours to kick my ass. I don't remember having a recess without my ass getting kicked. And guess what? I never told anyone about it because if I did, I'd get my ass kicked even worse. So I kind of just took the punishment from my bully, recess to recess. Although I was bullied for most of my life, I got through it. You know what? Some people don't get...